Her parents die when she's about five years old. When her parents and her whole family were traveling from Seattle to Minneapolis. And unfortunately, this was during the time of the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918. That was the beginning of a kind of, a special kind of psychological torture. The candor with which she was able to write about it in Memoirs of the Catholic Girlhood, the way she's able to bring it so vividly to life. Even when she's writing about the awful stuff in her childhood, there's no pity, there's anger. And she felt, I think, there was a lot of self-pity in women's books, perhaps. She would say also satire is holding a mirror up to someone so they can see their own reflection and seeing just how dumb they are. For someone who's never read her work before, I would recommend that they start with the group. The characters are still relatable today. She based the characters on her roommates. It's a, it's a book that's very, very much about class and about what happens when young women raised in certain ways come up against life. And there is a bit of cruelty in the group, which is why those women who read it, who had come from that world, and still had one foot at least in that world, were horrified because she was showing them what they were. Many of the questions that she raises in the group are still relevant to today's woman and today's society. Her legacy is that kind of independent thinking. She manages to be very much of her time and also she is in a way timeless.